telltale tie joint. In this video of the three-part series, we're going to learn how to draw the tenon on the tie beam. So again, the mission is to connect an 8x12 tie beam to an 8x10 post using the wedged half dovetail tension joint. And so the basic steps of this video are to first off draw a simple 8x12 tie beam timber. After we've drawn that timber, we're going to draw a two inch thick rectangular tenon. After that's drawn, we need to reduce that tenon to create the inch and a half dovetail on the bottom of the tenon. Then we will extend the shoulders or the haunches out one and one quarter inches from the original line of the timber. After that, we'll clean up some un unnecessary lines and we'll be good to go. So let's move on to the model. This is the finished model. So we are going to be drawing the tie beam that is in blue. So we have to extend this tenon. Let me pull it out of there. Give me a sec. So let me come out of x-ray mode. So we need to extend this tenon. It's two inch by 10 inch tenon. And then we need to cut this dovetail in the bottom of it. Uh, and then we need to create this angled shoulder. So we'll start fresh. Let me double check to make sure that my, you know, I need to set this to inches. So here we go. So my first step is to draw the timber and I want it to be an eight by 10, uh, I'm sorry, an eight by 12 by 10 feet. So I'm gonna come up 12 inches with my guideline and then I'm going to start here and come up to there and extend this out. Uh, I'm gonna go 12 inches comma 120 inches, which is 10 feet. Get rid of that guide. And then I'm going to push pull this eight inches. And so what I have now is I have a timber that is eight inches wide, 12 inches tall, and 10 feet long. So I'm going to make this a component. That's very important. Triple click, right click, make component. I'm going to call it tie and I've created it. Now, with that component open, I need to draw a two inch tenon on this face. So I'm going to use my guide tool and I'm going to find that center spot, drag it along the top. I'm going to come in three inches. Again, this is an eight inch wide timber. So I want a two inch tenon centered. So if I come in three inches from either side, you'll see that in fact, this is two inches wide. So now I'm going to use my rectangle tool draw a rectangle there. I'm going to pull this out 10 inches because my post is 10 inches. And now I need to cut a, an inch and a half, uh, you know, angled cut there. So I'm going to use my guide tool. I'm going to come down here and grab this and I'm going to come up 1.5 inches. Then I'm going to use my line tool and I'm going to click here and then click at that intersection, very important you see that X. And now I will use my push pull tool and I'll push that in and I'll type two inches. The delete guides and I'm just gonna click outside of it. And so you see I've drawn a two inch thick tenon, 10 inches long and I've created this bevel, but that left me with this leftover line. So I'm just gonna triple click and I'm gonna click on that and delete it. And so now I've done I've drawn the bevel. The next step is to draw a, an angled shoulder that's going to come one and a quarter inch out and then meet up at this top point. And I found it much easier to draw the tenon first than to draw the shoulder and then the tenon afterwards. You can, you can do it the other way, but for me, this has been easier. So I need to extend this out. So again, let me triple click it so that I have that uh, component open. And I'm going to create a guideline here that extends outward. Now I can do it. I could grab it here and then come down till it touches and there's the guideline. Or let me undo that and show you another way. I could just click here once on the line and then click the line again and it's the same process. Now I wanna drag this line outward. Now if I hadn't put this guideline here, 
when I started dragging this way, you see how that's no longer green? It would default down to the face of that tenon, which is three inches in. I don't want that. I want it on the same plane as this. So when I put that guideline in there, I can follow that. And then you see it's locked into the green. So I'm now going to type 1.25 inches. And now I'm going to, just like in the previous video, I'm going to use my line tool. I'm going to start here and click till I get that X. Click again. Then I'm going to come up to this top and click one more time. So now I've drawn this triangle and I need to extend it. And this is a little bit tricky because if you rotate it too far, then the tenon gets in the way. So I'm going to rotate it part way and just so I can get in there. And I'm going to use my push pull tool and I'm going to make sure that I'm highlighting that and I start dragging it and I need to know, I need to go three inches. I've done that, but that stops at that face. So I can come down here and grab this and drag that the other, just start dragging it and type two inches. And now I need to draw on this side. So I can't just continue to uh, drag it going this way because it doesn't, it doesn't carry the top part. So I need to redraw it. So I'm going to rotate this around and I'm still, this component is still open. So I'm good. So I'm going to bring a guideline down to here. And then I'm going to start dragging this guideline out following that. You see, I'm on the green again, 1.25 inches. So we can see what we're doing. And now using the line tool, I'm going to click here, find that X, click there and let up. And now I'm going to come up to here. And again, I have to rotate this around a little at a time. This is kind of fine work here, just so I can get to that face a little bit. There I go. And then my push pull tool, I'm going to pull it inward and I go three inches. And so I've drawn that. And then again, I have this other line that I need to clean up. In fact, there's two lines here I want to clean up. I want to get rid of that one and I want to get rid of that one. So let me click outside of this and delete guides and show you what we've got. So we have a timber um, and it's got the tenon and it's got the shoulder, but there's some lines there that we don't need because if we leave some of these lines, they're going to show up in the shop drawings and it's going to be confusing as to what lines get cut and what lines don't. So I'm going to open this back up again. And I'm going to click on this line because that's no longer necessary. And there's a line here I'm going to click on. You can't see it because the red was covering it. And then I'm going to come over here and click on this line. And I've gotten rid of that. So let me click outside of it. Oop, looks like there's still a line here. So I want to click that. Oops, didn't want to do that. All right. So now let me uh, let's see here. So I'm out of the component and you see I've cleaned up the lines on here, on the bottom and on the side, even though there's still a line there, it's just the blue line. That's the axis from SketchUp. But if I go into X-ray mode, I'll still see some other lines in there I don't need. So let's go view face style X-ray. See these lines in here, I really only need this sloped line, this line across and this line up here. I don't want to see these other lines in my shop drawings. So I'm going to triple click on that to open it. And I'm going to click on that line and get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of this line. I'm going to get rid of that line. I'm going to spin it around so I can see a little bit more clear so I know what I'm trying to get rid of. Get rid of that line. I'm going to get rid of that line. And I'm going to get rid of that line. So if I come out of x-ray mode, You see, I still have, you know, the, the drawing I want, but then when I go to print it in a shop drawing, I'm not going to have all these extra lines that I don't really need that were just a function of the drawing process. So once again, I'll go back into x-ray mode and you can see that that tenon is along that face and we are good to go. So that's the second part of drawing the wedged half dovetail uh, tie beam joint. In our next video, I'll show you how to draw the wedge. It's very simple, um, but there's a few steps that really make it uh, come out the way you want that's, that are going to be important. So stay tuned for video three.